new video shows two large SUVs dropping off dozens of illegal migrants at the border in uh, Hakumba, California. The group, appearing to be mostly adult males, made up of people from China, Turkey, Brazil, and India. The U.S.-Mexico border has been a hot topic for decades. With the alarming rate of illegal migration, it's no wonder. New footage showing migrants crossing the border and dozens of them cramped in a basement have gone viral. It seems with all the dangers associated with illegal migration, migrants are hell-bent on securing a better life for themselves. Migrants taking the risks. It was a typical day in South Richmond Hill, Queens, when an unsuspecting neighbor stumbled upon an unusual occurrence that put her ill at ease. As she made her way to work one morning, she couldn't help but notice something peculiar happening at the furniture store next door. E-bikes lined the sidewalk and people were constantly coming in and out of the building. She called 311, hoping that someone would listen and put an end to this menace. It was time for the truth to come to light. The neighbor who reported the presence of multiple e-bike batteries near the property expressed her fear for her own safety and that of her family, given the dangers associated with defective lithium-ion batteries. As the story gained traction, city inspectors were dispatched to the furniture store. What they discovered was beyond their worst nightmares. The furniture store's basement had become a shelter for dozens of immigrants, numbering up to 74. The basement had no natural light, no ventilation, and was a severe fire hazard. The migrants were living in dangerous conditions, trapped in a space that offered no escape. The city wasted no time in taking action. They ordered everyone out of the basement, deeming it unfit for human habitation. The migrants were left with no choice but to find alternative accommodations. Once again, facing the uncertainty and hardships, they had hoped to leave behind. Their stories were as diverse as the countries they hailed from. Many had fled war-torn regions, escaping violence and persecution in search of safety and a chance at a better life. They had left behind everything they knew, embarking on treacherous journeys that spanned continents, all in the hopes of finding a place they could call home. But their dreams were shattered when they arrived in the United States. The reality they faced was far from the promised land they had envisioned. Limited resources and a complex immigration system left them stranded, with nowhere to go and no one to turn to. When they stumbled upon Sar's furniture, they saw a glimmer of hope. The owner of the store became their unlikely savior. When they started coming to me telling me their stories, I started helping them, he explained. I didn't want to do it, you know. I thought about it twice, but once the city started enforcing a 30-day limit for single migrant adults staying at city-run shelters, these men were forced to sleep on the streets. The basement shelter provided a temporary respite from the harsh realities of life on the streets. It offered them a roof over their heads, even if it meant sleeping in shifts and sharing bunk beds with strangers. For some, it was a small price to pay for a semblance of stability. One migrant, who preferred to remain anonymous, shared his experience. He explained that the basement shelter allowed them to stay in one location, eliminating the constant upheaval and uncertainty they faced in the shelter system. But life in the basement was far from ideal. The lack of space meant that privacy was a luxury they couldn't afford. Every conversation, every moment of vulnerability was shared with those around them. They had to learn to coexist in the tightest of quarters, navigating the challenges of communal living. The basement shelter had its own set of rules. No cooking was allowed on site, forcing the migrants to rely on outside sources for their meals. The dangers of illegal migration cannot be overstated. In one distressing news, illegal immigrants attempting to cross the border were robbed at gunpoint. This alarming incident sheds light on the dangers faced by migrants, even after reaching the southern border. The incident took place near Chula Vista, California, a known hotspot for illegal border crossings. U.S. Border Patrol Chief Jason Owens revealed that armed bandits targeted these vulnerable migrants, robbing them at gunpoint. Security images released by Owens capture the terrifying moments when a man pointed a gun at a group of migrants. The area has become a hotbed for illegal border crossings, and unfortunately, it was the setting for this alarming robbery. U.S. Border Patrol Chief Jason Owens shared security images that captured the chilling moments of the robbery. In one image, a man is seen pointing a gun directly at a group of migrants, their faces filled with fear and desperation. It's a haunting sight that reminds us of the dangers faced by those seeking a better life. In the second image, a man can be seen holding a gun by his side as a family, unaware of the imminent danger, walks towards him. It's a heart-stopping moment that highlights the vulnerability of these migrants and the brazenness of the armed bandits.
bandits. These shocking visuals captured by the U.S. Border Patrol's surveillance technology near Chula Vista, California, provide undeniable evidence of the dangers these criminals and smugglers pose to both the migrants and the public. It's a stark reminder that the perils faced by migrants don't end at the border. The journey to the United States is already perilous, with migrants facing treacherous terrains, human traffickers, and other dangers along the way. But this incident sheds light on an additional threat that awaits them at the border, armed bandits who exploit their vulnerability. Incidents like these highlight the urgent need for increased security measures. The safety of both the migrants and the communities they seek to join must be ensured. These armed bandits pose a threat not only to the migrants but also to the public and even security agents. The exact details of the robbery, such as whether it took place on U.S. soil or in Mexico, remain unclear. Border Patrol Chief Owens recently revealed that nearly 180 illegal immigrants with gang affiliations have been apprehended so far this year. These gangs, including Pisces and MS-13, are involved in heinous crimes such as murder, extortion, narcotics, weapons and human trafficking, and prostitution. This incident serves as a wake-up call, not only to the immediate dangers faced by migrants, but also to the broader issues surrounding border security and national security concerns. With over 7.3 million migrants illegally crossing the southwest border under President Biden's watch, the scale of the immigration crisis cannot be ignored. It's a number greater than the population of 36 individual states, and it raises questions about the ability to effectively secure the border and protect the nation from potential threats. San Diego, a city known for its welcoming reputation, has recently been making headlines for a shocking development. In a surprising turn of events, the closure of the San Diego Migrant Welcome Center has forced Federal Border Patrol officers to drop immigrants off on the streets. This unprecedented situation has sparked heated debates among federal, state, and local officials about how to handle the influx of migrants and who should bear the financial burden. With nearly 100,000 migrants arriving in the region in the past six months, alone, the closure of the Welcome Center has left newly arrived migrants disoriented and without access to basic necessities. With reports of over 1,500 migrants being dropped off in just three days at a single bus stop in San Isidro, it is clear that the system is overwhelmed. County Supervisor Jim Desmond has called on the federal government to step in and provide assistance, as San Diego taxpayer dollars should not be solely responsible for addressing this crisis. Migrants who have been left to fend for themselves can be seen seeking shelter and assistance. They are unsure of what to do next, with no clear guidance or direction. Among them is Mustafa McCraney, a man who embarked on a two-month, $11,000 journey seeking asylum from religious persecution in Morocco. He had hoped for a different welcome when he stepped foot on U.S. soil, but the reality has been far from his expectations. He claims that they were told that they would be welcomed, that they would have food and everything they needed. But a few months later, they were released into the streets of San Diego and forced to find their own way. The closure of the taxpayer-funded Migrant Processing Center, which ran out of money just four and a half months into operation, has only added to the challenges faced by these released migrants. With limited resources and support, they are left to navigate an overwhelmed system. At the bus stop in San Isidro, where over 1,500 migrants were dropped off in just three days, the situation was dire. Many of these individuals have nowhere to go, no money, and no clear plan for their next steps. They are left waiting for someone to open their doors and provide assistance. Amidst the chaos and uncertainty, volunteers and advocates on the ground are raising their voices, highlighting the urgent need for action and support for the migrants left stranded on the streets of San Diego. These dedicated volunteers, representing local and state nonprofits, work tirelessly to provide aid and guidance to the newly arrived migrants. They understand the challenges these individuals face and the importance of offering support in their time of need. Patricia Mondragon, one of the passionate volunteers, emphasizes the need for a comprehensive approach that involves all levels of government. She believes that local and state governments should step up and provide essential facilities such as bathrooms, cell charging stations, and Wi-Fi to help disoriented migrants navigate their way. Advocates are also raising their voices, calling for transparency and accountability in the use of funds allocated to support migrants. They stress the importance of ensuring that the money is spent effectively and serves the needs of the community, U.S. borders, and immigrants. The surge in migrant encounters in the U.S.-Mexico border has been a topic of concern and debate with illegal entries into the country through the U.S.-Mexico border hitting a record high. In December 2023, the U.S. Border Patrol encountered nearly 250,000 migrants crossing into the United States from Mexico, marking the highest monthly total on record. This staggering number has surpassed previous peaks and has left many wondering about the causes, implications, and potential solutions to this ongoing issue. To understand why the numbers have reached a record
record high, we need to examine the factors that have contributed to this situation. Apart from economic factors, political instability and violence, shifts in U.S. immigration policies, and the perception of enforcement practices can also influence migration patterns. Changes in regulations such as the Biden administration's decision to stop using Title 42 expulsions may have contributed to the increase in encounters at the border. These factors, combined with other complex geopolitical and socioeconomic dynamics, have created a perfect storm leading to the record high number of migrant encounters in the U.S.-Mexico border. In December 2023, the majority of encounters at the U.S.-Mexico border involved single adults. These individuals often embark on the journey alone, seeking economic opportunities or fleeing difficult circumstances. Additionally, 41% of encounters involved people traveling in families, highlighting the importance of family units in migration. Lastly, 5% of encounters involved unaccompanied minors who face unique challenges and vulnerabilities during their journey. Historically, most encounters at the southwestern border involved citizens of Mexico or the Northern Triangle nations of El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras. However, in December 2023, there was a significant shift in the origin countries of migrants. Surprisingly, 54% of encounters involved citizens of countries other than these four nations. Among the notable changes in origin countries, Venezuelans stand out. In December 2023, nearly 47,000 migrant encounters involved citizens of Venezuela, a substantial increase from about 6,000 encounters a year earlier. The dire economic and political situation in Venezuela has driven many to seek refuge and a better life in the United States. Another surprising trend is the sharp increase in encounters with citizens of China, despite its distance from the U.S.-Mexico border. The Border Patrol reported nearly 6,000 encounters with Chinese citizens at the southwestern border in December 2023, up from around 900 encounters a year earlier. The motivations behind this increase warrant further exploration and analysis. These shifts in demographics and origin countries highlight the evolving nature of migration patterns at the U.S.-Mexico border. The record high number of migrant encounters at the U.S.-Mexico border has not gone unnoticed by the American public. A recent Pew Research Center survey reveals that the majority of U.S. adults are dissatisfied with how the government is handling the situation. According to the survey, 8 in 10 U.S. adults believe that the government is doing a very or somewhat bad job dealing with the large number of migrants seeking to enter the U.S. at the border with Mexico. This widespread dissatisfaction reflects the concerns and frustrations of many Americans regarding the management of immigration and border security. Nearly as many people view the situation in the U.S.-Mexico border as either a crisis or a major problem for the United States. Despite the risks, the number of migrants attempting to cross the Arizona border continues to rise. Over the past four months, the Tucson sector has recorded a staggering quarter of a million migrant apprehensions, the highest of any region. In recent years, the Arizona border has become a treacherous path for those desperate to enter the United States. The Arizona desert stretches out before them, a vast and unforgiving expanse that holds both hope and danger. For the countless illegal immigrants who attempt to cross the Arizona border, this treacherous journey is a matter of life and death. This influx of migrants puts a strain on both the Border Patrol and the local communities, who struggle to provide resources and support. In the face of these challenges, American volunteers have become a lifeline for the migrants. They offer food, water, medical aid, and a compassionate ear to listen to their stories. These volunteers understand the desperation and the hope that drives these individuals to risk everything for a chance at a better life. These immigrants come from all walks of life, driven by the promise of a better future, escaping poverty, violence, and political instability in their home countries. But the path they have chosen is fraught with peril. The rugged terrain presents a formidable challenge, with its rocky hills, thorny bushes, and sweltering temperatures that can soar well above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Many migrants are ill-prepared for the harsh conditions, lacking proper footwear, adequate clothing, and sufficient supplies of food and water. As they navigate this hostile environment, they must also contend with the ever-present threat of violent Mexican cartels. These criminal organizations control vast stretches of the border, using fear and intimidation to maintain their dominance. Migrants are often subjected to extortion, kidnapping, and even murder at the hands of these ruthless cartels. Maria, a migrant on the Arizona border, shares her harrowing experience. She narrates how she was shot by Mexican cartels while attempting to make her way to the U.S. Bleeding and terrified, Maria recalls the moment with a mix of fear and determination. She recounts that she was so scared that she didn't even feel the pain. Maria's story is not unique. Countless migrants face similar dangers as they traverse this treacherous path. They risk their lives, leaving behind everything they know in the hope of finding safety and opportunity on the other side. But it's not just the physical dangers that migrants face. The psychological
psychological toll of the journey is immense. The constant fear, uncertainty, and exhaustion take a heavy toll on their mental well-being. Many suffer from anxiety, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of their experiences. One of the primary motivations for migrants to seek a new life in California is the promise of economic opportunities. The state's robust economy, diverse industries, and thriving job market have long attracted individuals in search of better employment prospects. With sectors such as technology, entertainment, agriculture, and hospitality flourishing, California has become a magnet for those seeking a chance to improve their financial circumstances. California's geographical proximity to the U.S.-Mexico border has also played a significant role in the influx of migrants. As much of the illegal crossings have shifted away from Texas, Southern California has become a primary entry point for individuals seeking to enter the United States. The border region, particularly the San Diego sector, has witnessed a surge in illegal immigration from countries all around the world, including China, India, Afghanistan, and Peru. The influx of migrants in California has presented a complex and multifaceted challenge, with far-reaching implications for both migrants and the state. According to Customs and Border Patrol sources, they experienced nearly 1,100 illegal crossings in the San Diego sector in just one day. Among them, 97 were Chinese nationals and 91 were Turkish nationals. These numbers highlight the magnitude of the problem and the urgent need for action. The sheer volume of illegal crossings is overwhelming the Border Patrol agents, who are tasked with maintaining the security of our borders. The situation is reaching a breaking point, and it is clear that immediate measures need to be taken to address this crisis. Recently, a video emerged showing two large SUVs dropping off dozens of illegal migrants at the California border. This incident, which took place in the town of Hakuma, has raised serious concerns about the state of border security and the influx of illegal crossings. The video captured the moment when these two vehicles, packed with migrants, arrive at the border. The group, consisting mostly of adult males, is seen disembarking from the vehicles. These individuals hailing from countries such as China, Turkey, Brazil, and India are desperate to enter the United States. The fact that these migrants were dropped off at the border in such a brazen manner raises questions about the methods employed by human smugglers. It is evident that these individuals are being exploited by criminal networks who profit from their desperation. The incident in Hakuma is not an isolated event. Similar incidents have been reported in other parts of the country, indicating a larger issue at hand. The border crisis is not limited to one specific region, but is a nationwide concern. The impact of this crisis is felt not only by Border Patrol agents, but also by the communities near the border. Local ranchers have reported encounters with illegal migrants on their properties, posing a threat to their safety and livelihoods. In addition to the dangers posed by illegal crossings, there is also the issue of human smuggling. Just recently, authorities arrested a cartel smuggling guide who had been transporting illegal immigrants into Texas. Shockingly, it was discovered that this individual was wanted for murder in Mexico. Previous administration's immigration policies Barack Obama's immigration policies were a hotbed of controversy, with critics and supporters alike voicing their opinions on his approach. During Barack Obama's presidency, his administration implemented deportation policies that garnered both praise and criticism. In the early years, the number of immigrants deported from the U.S. increased annually, reaching a peak of 409,849 total deportations in fiscal year 2012. This surge in deportations led to Obama being dubbed the deporter-in-chief by pro-immigrant groups who were outraged by the high numbers. However, after 2012, the annual deportation numbers started to decline, with only 235,413 deportations in fiscal year 2015. Initially introduced by the Bush administration, SCOM allowed local police departments to voluntarily cooperate with the federal government on deportation efforts. However, Obama took it a step further and made it mandatory for all states to cooperate. This move marked a significant turning point in immigration enforcement, as it effectively forced local law enforcement agencies to become active participants in the deportation process. The purpose of ESCOM was to remove dangerous criminals from American communities, however. There is a lack of evidence supporting its effectiveness, with people being deported for even minor offenses. In 2012, Barack Obama signed an executive order that created the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals DACA policy. This groundbreaking policy aimed to provide relief for undocumented immigrants who were brought to the United States as children. Under DACA, eligible individuals 
individuals could apply for renewable two-year periods of deferred action from deportation, allowing them to remain in the country and become eligible for work permits. While DACA targeted some of the same issues as the DREAM Act, it did not provide a path to citizenship for those enrolled. This policy sparked both support and controversy, with proponents applauding the opportunity it provided for young immigrants to pursue their dreams, while critics argued that it encouraged illegal immigration and undermined the rule of law. In 2014, Barack Obama announced plans to create a related program called Deferred Action for Parents of Americans and Lawful Permanent Residents, DAPA. This program aimed to offer renewable deferred action status and work permits to parents of U.S. citizens or lawful permanent residents who were in the country illegally. However, the implementation of DAPA faced significant legal challenges. In 2015, several lawsuits from state governments led to an injunction blocking its implementation. Then, in 2017, the Trump administration announced plans to rescind DAPA altogether, leaving its fate uncertain. Additionally, in 2016, Obama's administration proposed the International Entrepreneur Rule, a policy designed to help foreign-born entrepreneurs establish and expand their businesses in the United States. This rule aimed to provide startup visas to encourage entrepreneurs from other countries to contribute to the U.S. economy. However, the future of this rule remains uncertain as it faced opposition and challenges under the Trump administration. These two policies, DAPA and the International Entrepreneur Rule, showcased Obama's efforts to address various aspects of immigration, from providing relief to parents of U.S. citizens to attracting foreign entrepreneurs to the United States. However, their implementation and long-term impact were marred by legal battles and political shifts. In the lead-up to the 2016 presidential election, Donald Trump made immigration a central focus of his campaign. He presented a bold and controversial vision for immigration reform, promising to address what he saw as the pressing issues facing the United States. One of the most prominent aspects of Trump's immigration platform was his promise to build a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. He argued that this physical barrier would deter illegal immigration and drug trafficking, citing the success of Israel's wall as an example. While some supporters saw this as a necessary step to protect national security, critics questioned the feasibility and cost of such a massive undertaking. Alongside the border wall, Trump advocated for various restrictions on legal immigration and guest worker visas. He argued that these measures were necessary to prioritize American workers and protect jobs. Trump's proposals included imposing a travel ban on citizens from several predominantly Muslim countries, which he claimed was crucial for national security. However, this move faced legal challenges and was met with widespread backlash, with critics arguing that it was discriminatory and violated the principles of religious freedom. Perhaps one of the most controversial aspects of Trump's saw immigration policy was his zero tolerance policy, which resulted in the separation of children from their families at the border. This policy aimed to deter illegal border crossings by prosecuting adults and detaining them separately from their children. The images and stories of children held in detention centers without their parents shocked the world and drew widespread condemnation. Despite the outcry, Trump defended the policy, arguing that it was necessary to enforce immigration laws. However, due to public pressure, the policy was later reversed and legal orders were issued to reunite the separated families. Yet the process of reuniting the children with their parents proved to be a challenging and complex task, as the sheer number of affected families and the difficulties in identifying and counting all the children posed significant obstacles. Trump also outlined four pillars for immigration reform in his State of the Union address. These pillars included providing a path to citizenship for dreamers, young undocumented immigrants brought to the U.S. as children, increased funding for border security, ending the diversity visa lottery, and implementing restrictions on family-based immigration. While some saw these proposals as necessary steps to protect national security and prioritize American citizens, others criticized them as being too harsh and detrimental to immigrant communities. Trump's immigration policy during his presidential campaign faced criticism from various sources. CEOs of major American companies warned of the potential harm that restrictive immigration policies could have on the economy. Additionally, controversies surrounding Trump's own business practices, such as the employment of illegal immigrants at his properties, raised questions about the consistency of his stance on immigration. As the campaign progressed, Trump proposed changes to birthright citizenship and embraced the Reforming American Immigration for a Strong Economy, RAISE Act, which aimed to reduce levels of legal immigration. He also advocated for mass deportation of illegal immigrants, although the feasibility and economic impact of such a plan were widely questioned. President Biden, who once condemned the Trump administration's immigration policies, has now implemented regulations that disqualify migrants from asylum if they enter the United States illegally after failing to seek protection in a third country. This means that most non-Mexican migrants 
immigrants will be ineligible for asylum. This is a significant departure from previous policies. The Biden administration is taking a more hardline approach, aiming to discourage unauthorized border crossings and prioritize those who have sought protection in other countries before reaching U.S. soil. Under these new regulations, migrants who are unable to prove that they qualify for an exemption to this policy will face swift deportation back to Mexico or their home country. But the consequences don't end there. Migrants who are deported under these circumstances will also face a five-year banishment from the United States. This means that they will be unable to legally enter the country for a significant period. The stakes are high and the potential consequences are severe. The implications of these policies are far-reaching. Migrants who attempt to re-enter the United States after being deported could face not only the risk of being turned away, but also potential jail time and criminal prosecution. This is a significant deterrent aimed at dissuading unauthorized border crossings. The Biden administration's new immigration policies are, in many ways, more hardline than the Title 42 public health emergency order that they are replacing. The goal is clear, to make it harder for migrants to qualify for asylum in the first place. These policies mark a seismic shift in U.S. asylum policy, with potential implications for thousands of migrants and asylum seekers. The journey to seek asylum has become even more challenging, with stricter measures in place. The impact of these policies is already being felt along the U.S.-Mexico border, where the number of apprehensions has reached record-breaking levels. As Title 42 expires, the strain on resources and the challenges faced by migrants and asylum seekers are expected to continue. The journey for these individuals is filled with uncertainty, fear, and desperation. During a White House press conference, a senior administration official confirmed the details of the executive order. The order would introduce new restrictions on asylum seekers and bar migrants from seeking asylum if they cross between U.S. ports of entry. In the days following the announcement, protests and demonstrations erupted across the country. Critics, including progressive and immigration advocates, pushed back, arguing that seeking asylum is a legal right and should not be compromised. The debate intensified on social media with politicians, activists, and everyday citizens voicing their opinions. Bronx Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez took to Twitter, stating, Doing Trump impressions isn't how we beat Trump. Seeking asylum is a legal right of all people, and we should commit to our principles. Where should the line be drawn with illegal migration? Should there be stricter punishments enforced to help curb the issue? If you enjoyed this video, click on the videos showing on your screen to enjoy more.